How's it going guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna be recreating a render I did from seven years ago, which was my first render. And I got to use the Dell Precision 7770 mobile workstation, which has the RTX A1000. So it's a really cool computer and this is a really fun project. So seven years ago, I created my first 3D render in a brand new Adobe program called Project Felix. Now it's called Adobe Dimension. I don't even know if it's still out. I think they morphed it into something else. But that was what I used for my first 3D render. It's kind of my gateway into 3D. And today I wanna to kind of take that, try to see what my thought process was seven years ago and um, see you know where I've improved on today and what I would do differently. So for this, I'm gonna be using the Dell Precision 7770 mobile workstation to create this. It's a cool computer. I'll be talking about it more on with the video, but that's gonna be using. They are the sponsor for today's video and super excited to be working with them. Now let's talk about what I think is wrong with this render. Um, on Off the bat, it's just dark. It definitely needs to be um, brightened up. Uh, I think Project Felix had like default HDRIs and they didn't really get that bright. Um, there's definitely no glowing. There's a lot of bright lights, but nothing's glowing. You can see in the reflections, there probably should be some subtle glow. Um, the materials are kind of boring. Uh, they were just kind of the drag and drop materials that they used at that time. Um, composition is cool. It's all right. Uh, I like the idea and the material on that object, you would think, oh wow, for his first render, that's pretty good modeling. That's just an image texture that they provide. It was supposed to be like a flat thing. And you could see on the right, I'm sorry, the left, how it's kind of like stretching around that sphere. It's supposed to be just flat circles. Um, so we have that. We definitely have, you know, these random uh, spheres that I manually placed because Project Felix was a very rudimentary program at the time. Um, and the background is just this infinite boring background. Um, so what would I do differently? There's a lot of things that I would do differently for this. One, I would definitely make that center object much more interesting. So here's what I want to change and here's what I'm going to do differently for today's sort of modern version of this older render from seven years ago. Um, I really like the fact that there's those kind of circular holes in the object. I definitely want to do that. I want to keep everything very metallic um, and definitely on the ground want to have just kind of these scattered spheres. And um, definitely another issue I find with this is the material on the spheres doesn't communicate the roundness of them in a 3D sense. They really just look like 2D objects that I Photoshopped in. Um, that's just because there's no there's no detail in the material. So that's all the stuff I'm going to do differently. And let's just go ahead and jump into Blender. All right, so we are in a blank document here. What I'm going to go do is first go to my preferences and my system, make sure I'm in optics. And this computer is loaded with some pretty powerful tech. So we have an NVIDIA RTX A1000 and a 12th gen Intel I, um, Core i9. So pretty cool stuff. I just wanna make sure that these are selected and also show you guys what's inside. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is get in a round cube. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some objects in uh, geometry nodes and um, Boolean them. And I wanna make sure my geometry is as stable as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a subdivision surface on this guy. It's not gonna be perfectly round. So we gotta throw a cast on there at a factor of one. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and create a object around this that we can instance things. And we're gonna use geometry for that because I love the instance workflow within geometry nodes. All right, so I'm gonna throw an icosphere on this guy right here. So we have an art icosphere. I'm gonna subdivide it uh, twice so we get enough things and we're gonna instance an icosphere on all of my points. So we definitely need an instance on points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna instance an icosphere all around this guy, bring the radius down on these fellas and then subdivide them appropriately. We don't want too heavy. This just is boring. What I wanna do is add some randomization to this. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a random value on all of these guys to randomize what we're looking at. And here we are, we have this random value going on. The minimum definitely needs to be higher. And then the maximum is cool. So we can kind of bring that maximum up if we want, bring that minimum down, and then just kind of see. All right, so I also created a wireframe to kind of connect everything together, because I think that'd be really cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and Boolean this guy here. And you notice he is now Boolean, and then we can go into our normals, auto smooth. I'm going to our normals and auto smooth. All right, so now he looks pretty cool. And then what I'm going to do now is also take this Boolean object 
and then I want to duplicate it and bring the radius down on them like that. And then with this guy, I'll just hide it. And now they can comfortably sit within this circle, which is really cool. And I really like that. So we're going to go ahead and run with that. So that's going to really recreate the idea of that circle with the holes in it. But in this case, I wanted to make it a lot more crazy, a lot more eclectic. And now we have this so far. So now that we're done with this, we can just go ahead and move this guy up. I'm gonna have the period key to center this out. And on that, I really appreciate that this has a full number pad. I've used laptops and you know, kind of mobile workstations before. Some of them don't have a full number pad. And if you've been doing 3D for quite a while, you know a number pad, a full one is super great. You don't have to hit FN and then hit the number and all that stuff. And you have to do the settings within Blender. So having this full number pad is really, really awesome. This computer has been a beast. It's super good. I've been using it for about two weeks now and it's awesome. Now I mentioned it's powerful. You saw what it has. It has that RTX A1000, it has that i9 CPU and it's just really, really powerful. In fact, this specific model is two times faster than its previous, uh, its, its predecessor. So they put a lot of gear into this, put a lot of work into this. Uh, you can see it, you can feel it. It's clean. Uh, it's got a really modern design too, but it doesn't have like the flashy RGB screaming at you like a powerful gaming laptop. I started using gaming laptops and all of them were very kind of like colorful and bright and all that, which is cool. But now that I'm older and now that I really just want something simplistic, very straightforward, modern design that doesn't scream at you, isn't very distracting, that's what this is. So aesthetically, it's a great mobile workstation on top of the fact that it's just very powerful, very reliable. So now that we have this, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start creating the environment and I don't wanna go too crazy with the environment. So we're gonna go and pull him back because I don't remember how far we're gonna go push it, but you know, you need that flexibility. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull him this way. Next, let's get a cube and create the walls that are gonna kind of fully create this whole scene and they need to be pretty thick. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and scale him pretty darn high. And we're using the empty because now we're gonna go ahead and array everything down the line. And then the array, we're just gonna bring it down like that. Rotate them all. And then I wanna create enough space for light to shoot through, especially when we, it's going to hit our objects. So let's bring that down like that, boom, we're good. So I wanna set it up so that we can have a light going through. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate these guys. Rotate it at the relative same angle. All right, we have an environment. So let's go ahead and start texturing this whole scene. So definitely wanna start with this guy and we're gonna use real-time materials. We're not gonna build these materials today because uh, we're just kind of doing what I would normally do for design. So I'm gonna use the basic metal. So we have that and then we can throw the basic metal on this as well, which we need to hop to geometry nodes to do that. Here, you notice the Boolean allowed these pieces here to not be selected. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit Control I, inverse that selection get a new material and just make it emissive and assign. And so that's gonna give you a really cool glow here. And in that case, let's just go ahead and turn on all our EV settings and then go back to cycles. Cool, this is what we're working with now. For these pillars here, we're gonna stay with the basics and use a basic cement. Okay, and then we can go ahead and make everything use that material. And then we can go ahead and edit that material to kind of make everything a bit more spread out like that. And then we can bring that bump down as well. So it's a little bit less crazy. And then for these bottom pieces, we're gonna to go to uh, the tiles and click on white marble. We need to unwrap and then bring up the scale to something like this, cool. Now we have our full scene kind of set up. We're gonna go ahead and set up our render settings. So 32 on the viewport, we're gonna go 800 on the viewer, no noise, one there. And then let's set up a light. So we're gonna go here to the EV view and just use scene world, scene lights. And get an area light going here. Then we'll scale him this direction and maybe this direction too. All right. So let's go to cycles and make that guy really bright. So you can see this viewport performance is pretty good here for this laptop. Um, 
We're gonna give it 2,500. Give it a slightly blue tint. And then the next step is to add some volume. All right, that's looking really good. Now there's one thing that we're missing from the original design and that is the objects on the ground. So let's go ahead and create that here. Something like that. And then of course we're gonna go over here to geometry nodes and create some instanced objects on here to create that look. Create new instance on points. I'm gonna go with an icosphere. Bring the radius down. Then I'm also going to displace it to give it some, uh, just some kind of movement here. So we'll kind of displace it like that. Then we're gonna take a random value set to Boolean to just kind of break up how many are actually instanced here, just to randomize that. For the object, we're gonna make it a dark metallic material, very low roughness here. And then let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun on the emission. Give it a layer weight and make it red. Kind of a bright orangey red. Let's view that in cycles. Make that color much more red. So now we have this, and of course we can make them brighter, but we don't want them to be too distracting. So this is what we are working with now. Let's go ahead and get our color management to look really nice. All right, so we are done here. Let's just go ahead and render this out and see how it looks. All right, so we're done, and this render took one minute and 20 seconds, which is pretty dang fast, um, but this is it. It looks awesome. I love the reflections here. I really love the noise here. I left that in. Didn't do a crazy, crazy high sample to kind of remove that because I love the way it makes it look gritty and interesting. We rendered at 300 samples, and my light paths are here. I didn't get too nitty gritty about it because uh, this is just a still render. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and composite it and we'll be done. VIE, we'll add a viewer in the compositor here. And then let's just go ahead and get a glare node and set that to uh, fog glow. And then maybe we get one more and then bring the mix down Cool, and with that being said, we're now done. It looks nice, it glows, it's got a nice blue, it's not got a nice red, it's got a good composition. And this one compared to the older one is just so much better, so much more interesting, better materials, better composition, um, and it's cool. So that is a very rough breakdown. So that is the video. I wanna thank Dell for sponsoring this video. This laptop is by far the most scalable workstation I've ever used. I love it. I'm going to be continuing to use it. I've had a lot of fun editing my videos on here. Haven't had any issues with 4K footage and all that. So thank you, Dell. I've enjoyed working with you guys. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.